What's going on everybody? This is Ultima I Device Vids, and today in this video we're going to be checking out 50 new hidden features and changes found in iOS 12. So these are some of the things that fly under the radar, so hopefully you guys will learn something new from this video. So here on the right we have iOS 12, and on the left we have a device on iOS 11 for comparison. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So first up, if you guys head over to settings and then open up the Safari settings panel, you'll find a new option titled show icons in tabs. And if you toggle that on, what it's going to do is it's going to place these icons for each website that you're in basically on your tab in the tabs view. As you can see right there, there's the YouTube icon, Facebook icon, and Twitter icon just like that. Those little small icons to help you indicate basically what website is open in each tab. Inside the weather application, there's two new options in iOS 12. As you can see, we have air quality index and air quality. So these were not present in iOS 11. As you guys can see, the predictive text bar looks different in iOS 12 than it does in iOS 11. So definitely some changes there. The text is black instead of white, and there's some other subtle changes too. In iOS 12, you can now change the amount that the skip buttons will be inside the podcast application. So the buttons that allow you to skip backwards or forward a certain amount of seconds, you could change that amount to what you want. So if you go ahead and jump into settings, you could scroll down to the podcast settings. And in here, you'll find this new option down here at skip buttons forward and back. And if you go in here, as you can see, you could choose from anywhere from 10 seconds, 15, 30, 45, or 60. So let's say we wanted them both to be 45 seconds. I could just go ahead and choose that for this one. And then for back, I could also choose 45. And now when I go ahead and launch up the podcast app, you'll notice there, it does, the change does reflect. It says 45 for both. And again, it'll go ahead and forward and go back 45 seconds. And there's actually another new option in the podcast settings. It's called skip instead of next previous. So basically, if you guys have headphones that have the skip back and forward con you know, controls, or if you're using you know, car controls that have the back or forward, you can have it so if you enable this, basically, it'll skip you know, your preferred amount of seconds forward or backwards rather than going to the next or previous episode. If you guys jump into the messages application and open up a conversation, you'll notice that the I that is normally present in the upper right hand corner of the conversation is no longer there. As you can see, it's present in iOS 11 over here and it's not here on 12. However, you can see this new little arrow next to the contact name. And if you tap on that, you get this new menu that folds out that allows you to audio FaceTime or video FaceTime the person. And then you get the I here for the information sheet. So it's a nice little hidden menu in the messages application. When 3D touching on the camera icon, you'll notice that we have a new scan QR code option. And this actually completely replaces the record slow-mo option that was previously found in iOS 11. And this takes effect on both the app icon and in the control center, as you can see down here, you get that same scan QR code option. And speaking of QR cards, if you guys head over to settings and then go into the control center settings, you can go into customize controls and you'll find a new toggle for scan QR code or a new shortcut rather. If you go ahead and add it, you could go ahead and tap on it and it'll do the same thing, take you to your camera or you could go ahead and scan a QR code. There are some new Siri accents that have been added. If you guys jump into settings, Siri and search, then go into Siri voice, you'll notice here we have Irish and South African accent here. So that's pretty cool. Reachability is now accessible within the app switcher. So as you can see here, I'm in the app switcher. I could just bring down reachability just like that. And again, this is not something that you're normally able to do. So uh, you know, just a new function with reachability there. Now also some other changes to reachability. You'll notice we have this up facing arrow inside the reachability view, just like that. And another change is you could actually move reachability around and basically drag it up basically yourself with your finger like this. Uh, you can't unfortunately resize it because if you try to release like this, it'll just close. But it's just kind of a new way that we haven't been able to interact with reachability before. And I think it's just kind of nice, definitely a nice little detail there. The media player in iOS 12 actually has a new dark theme, as you can see, just like this, when it shows up in the notification center area and on the lock screen. I think it looks absolutely beautiful in comparison to the white one. There's numerous new experimental WebKit features that have been added to the Safari settings in iOS 12. So if we go ahead and go into Safari and then Advanced and then Experimental Features, you'll notice in comparison with iOS 11, iOS 12 has numerous new options basically added to the experimental WebKit features. And this is a change that won't affect most people, but if you guys don't have a SIM card in your device, as you can see, neither of these phones have SIM cards, and you go into the control center, you'll notice that the cellular data toggle is now grayed out, and you're no longer to access it. Obviously, it makes sense because you don't have a SIM card, but in iOS 11, you'd be able to toggle it on and off, and you know basically, that's been fixed in iOS 12. 
If you guys head over to settings, general software update, you're going to find a new automatic updates option at the top. If you go in here, you have the ability to toggle automatic updates on or off. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work going forward, but presumably it's going to allow your device to automatically update without you having to do anything. So there's some new options for markup. So if I go ahead and go into photos here, we can hit select edit and we're going to go ahead and open up markup over here. So, uh, first of all, once you guys have any tool selected, you'll notice here on iOS 12, if I go ahead and tap the, the tool again, you'll get this new interface. In iOS 11, you can see that's not the case. And basically, you can control the opacity right here, as you can see. You also have some, basically, options to determine how thick you want your stroke to be, so you can really control the way that your markup will look. Now, also, under the Colors menu over here, you'll have this new rainbow icon on iOS 12, as you can see. And if you tap on this, it allows you to choose very specifically the exact color that you want. So, again, you could get, you know, the exact color making for the you know exact markup that you want. Many of the sliders inside the settings application have gotten bolder in iOS 12. As you can see right there, the settings slider there is actually bolder than iOS 11's was. The sun icon in the brightness slider reacts differently to different levels of brightness in iOS 12. So as you see here, as I sh basically lower the brightness, the sun icon will shrink faster in iOS 12 than it does in iOS 11. As you can see, it kind of gets smaller, quicker, uh, than the iOS 11 one does. So very subtle change, but it is there. If you guys open up the home application, you'll notice in iOS 12, the icon in the upper left-hand corner there is a little house. In iOS 11 and below, it was a location icon. So as you can see right there, just a small change. The autofill settings for name and passwords has changed. So previously in iOS 11, when you go into Safari settings and then go into autofill, you'd find this option titled names and passwords, which would allow you to autofill names and passwords that you have saved on your device. As you can see on iOS 12, it's not here anymore. Basically in iOS 12, you go up to the passwords and accounts settings here, and then you're going to be finding in iOS 12, the autofill passwords option right here. So it makes sense because this is where you manage the passwords themselves. Obviously the toggle should be in here rather than in the other Safari settings. And another very subtle change, you notice that the uh, title for the accounts and passwords section has been renamed to passwords and accounts. So very subtle flipping of names there. A widget has been added for the new screen time feature. If you guys slide over and click on edit, you'll see in your list of widgets, you'll have the new screen time widget. As you can see right at the bottom there, we can go ahead and add it. And then again, this is the widget to monitor screen time information. Inside the Compass application, you can no longer slide over to get to the Leveler feature like this. As you can see, that's no longer the case in iOS 12. However, the Leveler has not been removed. It's just been moved to the new Measure application. As you can see right here, there's a new tab at the bottom for Level. So this is where it is now. If we go ahead and open up the podcast application here, as you can see, in iOS 12, we have this new purple location icon up at the top. And if you tap on this, it's going to allow you to enable or disable notifications when new episodes come out for the podcasts that you're subscribed to. So you can enable or disable, you know, again, see a list of all the podcasts you're subscribed to and basically determine whether you want to get notifications when a new episode comes out for specific podcasts. When you're in a FaceTime call, the end button is now an X instead of a phone. Also, you have this new menu with the three dots that you can tap on that has has many options inside of it and some information as well. If you guys jump inside the music application and you're not a subscriber to Apple Music, as you can see right there up at the top, uh, the banner that is basically advertising Apple Music does look different, a little bit cleaner in iOS 12. The welcome screen to the health application has changed slightly. You can see there the play button is darker on iOS 12 and it's a little bit smaller. And here's yet another minuscule change, the health record splash screen as well. You can see there it's very slightly different on iOS 12. You have that kind of border uh, basically as you can see right there. And then on iOS 11, it's all just kind of in one area. Again, very small change. If you guys go into the podcast settings and scroll down to the bottom under podcasts and privacy, you'll notice that this uh, interface has some new information and it actually looks quite different, uh, different interface as well. Inside the notification center area, you'll notice that the uh, header for recent notifications is notification center on iOS 12 or back on iOS 11. It would just say basically a time frame, for instance, yesterday or maybe earlier today. And again, now it's just going to say notification center. And here's another change for the notification center area. You notice there the X button to clear notifications is much larger on iOS 12 than it is on iOS 11, as you can see right there. And that goes the same thing for when you tap on it. The clear button there with the text is also much larger on iOS 12. 
And there's numerous changes to the accessibility settings in the settings application. So if we jump over to settings, general accessibility, uh, first of all, if you guys go into increase contrast, you'll notice that the option that was previously called darken colors has now been renamed to just increase contrast for whatever reason. Some new options have been added to the iOS dictionary settings. So if you go into settings, general, and then scroll down to dictionary, you'll notice that some new languages and options have been added in here. So for uh, English speakers here in the United States, uh, there's a new source that has been pre checked by default and that's the Oxford American Writers and then again there's also some other languages and options that have been added to here which is definitely good to see. If you guys go ahead and expand the music widget you'll notice that on iOS 12 the uh, music icon there on the little playback control button over there on the left as you can see they let a little bit more light through on iOS 12 than over here on iOS 11 so you can see there it's just slightly lighter again you can see kind of more light bleeding through on iOS 12. If you guys jump into settings, general accessibility, and find any option that basically references the app switcher, uh, the app switcher has been renamed from multitasking to app switcher. As you can see right here, just a very subtle naming change there. There's a new battery graph that has been added to the battery settings of iOS 12. As you can see right here, if we scroll down, we have this nice battery graph here. It looks very nice. Definitely some good information to be found within here. If you guys open up the settings for maps in iOS 12, you'll notice this convenient toggle right in the map settings for background app refresh that you can enable or disable right there. If you guys jump into the wallpaper settings and then go to choose a new wallpaper and then stills, you will notice that the iOS 9 wallpaper, the stock iOS 9 wallpaper that looks like this, is unfortunately no longer included in iOS 12. It's nowhere to be found in the stills, unfortunately, so they have taken that one away. You'll also notice that for the title of the stills, it's actually titled stills in iOS 12, while on iOS 11, it's just titled wallpaper. If you guys go into settings, privacy, and then location services, and then scroll down until you see system services go in there, you'll notice that do not disturb has been added to this list in iOS 12. As you can see here on iOS 11, it is not there. And I'm assuming this is because the new do not disturb in iOS 12 incorporates some features that relate to your location. The order of the options on the front page of the settings application have been rearranged to make a little bit more sense. So on iOS 12 here, as you can see, uh, notifications, sounds, do not disturb, and the new screen time option are all bundled into one section. Well, on iOS 11, as you can see, sounds used to be down here. And, you know, basically it makes sense that all the options that pertain to sound and notifications and things like that would be bundled together. And also with that change, you'll notice that the control center option that was previously in that same cluster in iOS 12 has been moved down here lower in the options. Again, just to you know make room for this one section here being all for sound and notification you know like functions. And this is something that a lot of you guys wouldn't have noticed if you had a custom app layout, but there is a brand new default home screen layout in iOS 12, and this is what you're looking at right now. So as you can see right here, and again, this is the one on iOS 11. They just kind of rearranged the way that icons are by default when you get a new device or you set up a new device. If you guys do want to see this, uh, you can reset your home screen layout to default. Just keep in mind that this will remove any custom layout that you have, but you can go into settings, general, reset and then reset the home screen layout and then you'll see this new default layout. You can now use Siri to turn on and off your flashlight just like this. Turn on the flashlight. As you can see just like that on iOS 12 the flashlight is enabled and on iOS 11 it's not. As you can see there it says I'm not able to do that. And You could also use it to turn it off. Turn off the flashlight. Just like that. You can now use hands-free Siri on iOS 12 while low power mode is enabled. So let me go ahead and jump into settings on both of these guys, go into battery and enable low power mode. So now, as you can see right here, when I say, hey Siri, it's actually going to activate on iOS 12 just like that, where on iOS 11 you see it didn't activate. In the control center, when you go ahead and 3D touch on either the camera or calculator shortcut, you notice that on iOS 12, there's this new lip at the bottom of the menu here. As you can see right there, it's not present on iOS 11. And again, it's the same thing with the calculator. You can see right there, just that new little lip at the bottom, maybe just to make things look a little bit more complete. Inside the Touch ID and Passcode settings for the Touch ID options here, you'll notice a new password autofill option. So if you want to basically use Touch ID to autofill the passwords that you have saved on your device, you can enable that toggle. The way that copyright is displayed under descriptions for applications in the App Store has changed. So if you guys scroll down to the bottom, as you can see here on iOS 12, the uh, you know copyright is no longer directly at the bottom. It's actually been built in to this view up here. As you can see right there, there's this new section in this view called copyright and it displays right here where again on iOS 11, you'd have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to see it.
All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.